Hello and welcome to another episode of The Laws of Minecraft with me, Law from Chaos. And today in this episode we are going to be discussing a few different things. Uh, first thing we're starting off with is creeper proofing our base. <laughs> uh, I thought mob creeping was off, it was not. So first we're going to have to um, just turn off all the spawning and then we're going to want to set aside a designated spawning area that is explosion proof. And I'll be showing you how to do all of that shortly. Alright, so... First of all, we want to get into everything and um, light up the base properly so that we don't have any monster spawning at all. So first of all, uh, I don't know if any of you guys know this, but if you press F7, it will show you areas that are at risk for spawning. Yellow is moderate risk, uh, but still can spawn, so you want to watch out for it. Uh, and red is high risk. And so we're just going to remove all the areas that are currently capable of spawning. Because I don't want any more holes spawn up in my base. As you can see, there's a big hole right here. And it actually blew up my chest, but fortunately most of the items were fine. And I just had to move everything. I did lose a few things, but not much. And so we're going to repair this right now. We'll take a look around. Should be okay up there, but I'm going to double check anyway. Because, okay, yeah. The way to get blown up is to not be careful. Yeah, as you can see, my chicken population is coming along. For which we are glad. Because eggs are directly uh, compostable. You can put those directly into... There, and I might as well show you. I don't have to do as much composting anymore, obviously, because we are no longer quite as worried about dirt. But it is useful. So out of 16, looks like it takes 13 of them. Okay, so like uh, like uh, sugar cane. Okay, not bad. At least it's not like the 32 needed for apples. <laughs> okay, I'm looking around the base. Looks like we've got an area no more areas that are it's possible to spawn anything on which is what we want because that was obnoxious to suddenly get blown up yeah was not my favorite thing to have happen certainly okay so now I want to show you a type of block which we can use to make an explosion proof area which we can actually make and uh, which is not too difficult actually but it does require pure stone um, and so we're going to have to make some stone. Uh, fortunately, though, obviously we got our cobblestone gen coming along nicely, and so it is not so hard to make stone anymore. Ah, here, perfect. We'll just make a full stack of it. There we go, perfect. So we'll let that go along. And in the meantime, I am going to uh, just pause everything. Okay, welcome back. I've made that stack of stone. I'd forgotten how slow regular furnaces are. I'll probably have to build more. <laughs> uh, now we just need to take this stone and we're going to turn it into stone bricks. And now what we're going to do... And we're going to divide it like this, like you would like a chest. And we're going to take forced nuggets and put them in the middle. And what's going to happen is you can turn these into forced bricks. Now, forced bricks are extremely blast resistant. So these are perfect for what we want to do. I told you these forced trees would come in very handy. Uh, so we can do this. And now they're all yellow. And it's not my favorite color. But I don't think I have any dyes yet. So for the moment, we'll probably... Oh, no, I do have lapis lazuli. Hmm. It's tempting. I wonder how many would let me change... I think I have to do it like this. I think I have to have all... It's not quite worth it to me yet to waste my lapis on that. I wonder if we've got anything else. Coal would work. Coal I've got enough of. I can probably do this. I don't know. Some things will I use coal, so we'll see. Nah, no. Okay. Yeah, that's fair enough. So, for the moment, then, we will use just them as yellow for the moment. That'll work. And I'm going to put this with my finished products. I've got my finished products section here with 
random crap. Yeah. I lost a few things, but I got, I kept most of everything, which is good. Oh, I don't, I don't think I'd even notice. I think I... Yeah, I lost, I lost that rubber world tree sapling thing. Oh well. That's probably for the best. I would probably would have accidentally grabbed it one day and planted it and created a huge mess. Okay, so what we're gonna want to do with this? I'm just gonna. I'm trying to keep my entire base within a certain amount of section for chunks because I like to do that. I think it keeps things neat. So I've been trying to keep it within these chunks here, as you can see. Because uh, by doing a 3x3 three three chunk area, I've got 9 chunks, which is a decent amount of area, and I can just kind of stack it up and down for most purposes. For now, anyway. But essentially what you can do with this, now that you've got a blast-proof section, is to uh, create an area with it. Um, like so. So you go out and, you know, make like you do with one of these. Now, it should be noted, however, I do not believe mobs are capable of spawning on this force brick, so you can use it for that reason as well. Because I yeah, don't think they can spawn on it. Even though we're coming out here away from the light, it doesn't start to get uh, those yellow lines on it. And so that there's actually two ways to make this your base creeper resistant with this. One is just to prevent all spawning using these blocks. Okay, I'm pressing F7 here just to take a look at it. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to. I'm going to do a quick test over here, just make sure I've got it on properly. So we got... Okay, see? Okay, so it is indeed on. I need to respond to this person real fast. There we go. Uh, but it's not showing up over here, even though it is dark, see? And so that way you know that this particular block will not allow mob spawning. And now you could make a whole square with this, a block or something, and then put like fill the bottom with obsidian or stone or wood. Um Sorry, I got distracted with that. But so yeah, that's essentially it. So you could actually make the entire base bottom out of this, so that if a creeper does manage to blast on, and you could like cover it, you know, with because who's going to notice? <laughs> You're in here, and you only see what's directly below you. So uh, if you had an actual perfect square, you'd actually never see what's below you completely. And so you could have blast resistant stuff underneath your base and so on. Anyway. So that was what I wanted to do. Next, we're going to get over to here. I rebuilt my Tinker stuff, uh, moved my stencil table. It was the only thing that survived uh, and moved this. Though I did the these patterns actually survived, which is nice. And so we're going to do that momentarily. OK, welcome back. So I've got the parts I need for this built out. And so we're going to build these parts real quick. And then what we're going to be making is uh, we've already made a, a mattock, a stone one. We've I showed you how to make a wooden one earlier, so just the same principle. Um, this one we're just going to be doing a pickaxe. So very simple. It just needs one piece of cobblestone, and there it goes. And now we're going to be using the binding pattern here. And the same. And we're going to make a stone binding. And we actually get a stone shard, because a stone shard is a little bit extra. I think it represents half a piece of cobblestone, essentially. Because the binding only requires half of a material. And so they tell you how much they cost. So most things cost one. And we've already made our stone rod, so we're going to just go right over to our pickaxe and go, okay, we want that there, and we want our binding here, and we want our axe head there, and then we can look at it. And we go, okay, full durability, not incredibly durable, but fully repairable. 
Uh, it has stone bound modifier, which I believe means it gets slightly faster as it uh, gets worn down. It can mine up to level iron with iron, which is good. And we can actually modify these things. I don't think we need to modify any of them yet. I don't even know if we have the tools to modify anything as of yet. But for now, the sword. So there we go. All right, excellent. So that's exactly what we want to have happen. I probably should create a small little chest over there so that we can... store related items from over here. And that was not where I meant to put it. Oh, well. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> can make a double chest. Stone stone tool rolls, that kind of thing. We'll put them over here. Alright, so we got everything working. And if you want to repair them, just like before, Matic, I'll just show you. You put it here. You put some of the material here, like cobble, and then it'll repair it. So, we're not actually going to do that right now. But you can if you need to. I think you might be able to repair it with this shard, actually. In case you have extra ones and don't ever want to use anything else for them. Yep, I can repair it with my shard. So I'm just going to do that, and the shard is gone, and my Maddox's back at full health. Excellent. Okay, now we've got this coming along. And I should have some stone... Yep, stone hammers here. And I've got some gravel. And so I'm going to start just sifting through some gravel here, and we're going to work with what we find. Uh, it should be noted, however, it might be time to take some of this gravel and break it down into sand as well, because there's a few things you can get with sand. Uh, I think there's exotic seeds, which you can use to make mycelium, so you can use that to grow mushrooms. Uh, and you can... The mycelium and water lets you make witch water, I believe, which you can do some interesting things with. I'll get into that shortly. But more than just those things, we can actually make, uh, I believe it'll give us cactus seeds as well. Uh, both types of cactus, saguaro, which it gives us the fruit for, so you can plant the fruit. And then when the saguaro current grows, whenever it rains, it'll produce more fruit on it, and you can harvest the fruit. And so you can get cactus for that. But you can also get regular vanilla cactus seeds, I believe. Uh, I do not know if there's anything else that it gives you or not. But those are all options. Also, as we uh, make more dirt here, I've just been gradually making it. I'm going to start working with it uh, for another option, and I'll show you that in a minute. For the moment, though, we're almost done sifting all this gravel. And we're going to want to make a few things with it. If we can. Okay, perfect. So we got tons and tons of ore here, so we're just going to push this all over here. And let's make sure we keep the finished products with us. So, emeralds, quicksilver drops, uh, flint, and coal, and appetite should all come with us, as well as amber and force gems. Okay. Yeah, you can see at the moment I have all of my uh, Thumbcraft stuff done, so I can see the what's on a lot of this stuff. Some of it I've never scanned, like the stone hammers and stuff. But uh, I may eventually do a mod spotlight with you guys for how to do it with X and the Hilo, because it's a little bit different. And if I do that, I'll probably ask Landris to delete my character data so that I can adequately show you guys how to do it. Which will take a long, long time, but hey, whatever. <laughs> I think I've still got about a billion research points, so that works. Actually, I think those all get deleted too, too. Rats. Oh well. Worst things have happened. Okay, so I'm putting my eggs away. Okay, so we got a lot of this, and you might be asking, what should we make now? At this point, what we want to make is called an autonomous activator. Now, these tools are incredible. Uh, and they work incredibly well with sieves if it's activated. Not all servers will have it activated, so if you're trying to do this on a server, you will want to find out if it is or not. Uh, because if not, then it makes all of Skyblock much more difficult. Okay, but in order to make this, it is 
I mean, this is a really, really simple machine by most standards, but by our current standards, this is actually rather difficult. Uh, so we need glass, so we're going to need to make some sand. That is not hard, at least. Uh, we'll need some redstone. I think we've got some already. How much redstone have we got? We got one. I, we're going to need two for this, I believe. One for this and one for the piston. So we need two things of iron, which I believe we have enough to make right now. And then we'll need two things of tin. And then the piston, we can actually use iron, typically, but we can also use a forcing it. And we can make forcing it's right now a heck of a lot easier than we can make iron. So we're probably going to use the forcing it. Uh, and yep, like I said, another piece of redstone, some cobblestone, wood, none of these are too hard. And then a chest. So this is actually not horribly difficult. Uh, first, we need to make sand, and I'll show you how to make that real quick. So we're going to take our cobblestone and essentially just treat it with the hammer twice. Perfect. So put it down again, and and voila, we have sand. And we need to make redstone, so I think with the sieve that's made with, um, it's either made with sand or dust. I think it's probably made with dust, but I'm not absolutely certain. So, yeah, if you make sand here, it gives you the stuff. Okay, so it must be dust. So I'll show you the recipe real quick. There's dust. And yeah, redstone. Decent chance. So we're going to have to make some redstone real quick as well. So we're going to do that by... <laughs> Torches are nice, but not what I was trying to put down. There we go. Okay, so 13% chance. Means about 1 on 8. Might actually be 12.5% chance, I don't know. So we're going to double 8 to give ourselves a good chance of getting it. So we're just going to go through all this. Now, autonomous activators, which is what we're trying to make, have a lot of uses. They can be used to place blocks, to use tools on a block, to right-click or left-click on a block continuously. Uh, they can be used with all of those things, and they can be used with a redstone signal or without. And so you might be going, wow, that's quite a quite a list of things I can do, and it is. A lot of times it's disabled with Steve interaction, but Landers has told me that he's fixed that and it should now be working with Steve's. And if it has, in fact, been fixed, uh, because it wasn't working because it's an option, because if it's working on a normal vanilla server, it can be incredibly powerful and a bit OP. So, which I always like to call op. A lot of people call that OP, and I go, I want to call it op. Don't ask me why. Maybe because I want to think of it as like being operator level power, you know, on the server. <laughs> the operators who are the most powerful. Okay, great. So we got 16 dust, so we're going to get all sorts of crap out of this. A lot of it will be like mineral power powders, too. Uh, I think we might be able to get gunstone, uh, gunstone, um, gunpowder out of it. Yeah, we did. Matter of fact, get gunpowder out of it already. So not bad. We're hoping for some redstone. Now this dust can actually be turned into clay. I showed you that already, but just in case you haven't seen that video, if you have a barrel full of water, those kind of barrels over there, and you put clay or dust in it, you get clay out immediately. So you can just take that out, and you've got it. Yeah, so I've given ourselves a good chance we'll get redstone, but statistics being what it is, there's no guarantee we actually will. Oh, we just did. Excellent. Might as well finish this off. Okay, perfect. So we'll put our finished product in here. Gunpowder, we're going to need to take our redstone out. We're going to need two things of iron. We need one, we need two things of tin as well, but we don't have it. We need to turn our sand into glass. No, da, 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 da. Alright, come on, autonomous. There we go. Okay. 
So, and we need redstone, iron, and glass for that one, right? As I said, we're gonna need a forcing it for that one, so we might as well get nine of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I gave myself one too many. Oh, not a big deal. Okay. So we'll take that and we'll do that now. So right now we can make these a heck of a lot easier than iron. That will probably change as we automate this system. Our system automation will allow us to get a lot of very impressive things done. And we do not want to accidentally put that down. So I moved it because uh, if we accidentally were to put that down, that would be bad. And we actually got some iron and stuff out of that. That's nice. Whole raised tin, so on. Okay. So we need to make more tin, like I uh, said. And the chest, so we're going to need a little wood as well. We'll grab some of that real quick. Alright, and I think I probably have some tin in here, but we'll have to see. Yep, I've got a decent amount of tin, actually, so that's excellent. And I don't know if you guys remember the drill, but you do this. You need four of them, you turn them, and then we're going to break it all the way down into dust. And so this is the tin ore, crushed tin ore. So we take that and we make more, and you turn it into sand. And that time, nothing. We didn't get anything extra out of it, but that's okay. Sometimes you have a chance of getting more out of it. So, there it is. And it's the ore dust, and you cannot break this down any further. You just want to put these in here, and you'll get tin out of it. So, it's good. Okay, so, now we're going to put these in here so we can stack everything properly. Anytime you have four or more, you can you know you can do something with it, whether it's turn it into the ingot or just take it to the next step. Uh, so we got that. We just need one of these pieces of tin. So we'll take that. We'll let the other one finish. All right. So we'll make our component bits. So iron and iron and oh, I don't have my redstone yet. Okay, I'll grab the redstone. Wait, where did it send I must have put it up here. That's a dust, right? It looks like all the other dusts. <laughs> okay, so we're going to make our pneumatic bit. Alright, pneumatic servo, very good. And then, I'm sure most of you know how to make this, but just in case, this is how we make our piston. Oh, and I reversed this. Okay, very good. And then we need a chest. And then we've got our tin. So we get our tin here, put it there. Piston, chest, and our pneumatic servo. And we have an autonomous activator. Excellent. Autonomous activator is the best thing to use for a lot of purposes. So we are going to use this right on this. And you go, wait. So this is actually the end we want the other way. And so we're going to have to actually pick this up. So it should pick up with just one of these. Take a pickaxe to it. Yep. All right, so that is the end we actually want the other way. So if you want that, what we're going to do is put a chest right here. And there's actually some very good reasons for this anyway. Put that right there. As you can see, if you've worked with machines at all, that orange means it's an output slot. And so we're going to tell it what to do now. So we can tell it, I want you to right click. That is not true anymore. Because what we want to do is have it use one of these as a machine. So we're going to give it this. So we could do this while we're standing here, doing other stuff.
Now, but it's not going into the inventory. So, what we're going to have to do is come up with a... Whoops! We are so dead. <laughs> Never intended to have that on there, but... Uh, and it keeps putting me back up there. Why is it coming back up there? I, I don't know. Uh, well, I'm going to use something I didn't plan on using. Actually, no, I've got perfect. I'll do suicide. Okay, perfect. Now, he put keep inventory, whether I'd prefer to on or off for this kind of stuff. But, uh... So this is spawn, by the way. It's actually... It's a whole massive, beautiful building over there. But this thing's been running while we were gone. And so it'll have a little bit stored down here for us. So I'm probably going to have to make something else to pick up everything it's dropping. Which is fine. I'll probably end up making a hopper, actually, underneath it. What I prefer would be a vacuum hopper, and I can actually make one of those without too much difficulty. Um, but I think I'll need something else to... Actually, no. I told you four stuff's incredibly useful, right? It is. Now, I don't have quite enough to do what I want to, but force pickaxes can pretty much handle everything, including obsidian. And so, I'm going to pause it, I'm going to make a little bit more lava here, and I think lava actually requires only four blocks because it's, it had a little bit left over after I used that one bucket over there. And so I'm going to put three more things of cobblestone in this. One, two. And then I'm going to arrange for everything to be made, and I'm going to pause it for just a sec while I do that. Okay, we are back, and I've got... Well, I'm supposed to have enough bucket of lava here. We'll get back. Okay, this time I made sure before I turned it back on that the lava was ready. It looks like it's still got some cobblestone. It's very slow as it transfers, changes things over. So, all right, we got some lava now. Yeah, I've act actually, now that I've got lava, you can put lava underneath this to make it faster. And the fastest form is netherrack on fire underneath it. Uh, so we may eventually upgrade this crucible. Not my biggest concern at the moment, though. So. We want to make some obsidian, so we're going to do that just by turning one of the corners of this into lava and letting it change. There we go. Perfect. And now we're going to go over here, and I've got a bunch of forest trees, and I figure I'll just harvest these in the normal way and show you how I do it. Just in case you were wondering. Okay, so we got are sapling out of that, but not much else. And that's not uncommon. They don't always offer tons of stuff. But the logs are useful. The logs can be turned into a unique form of charcoal, uh, which is a little more powerful than regular charcoal. I think a golden power or something. But you also get these forced nuggets coming out of the trees. So we got two from that one. And so you'd only need nine to make a... Uh, a uh, ingot. And so you can take those ingots and make tools with them. In the case of a pickaxe, we'll need three of them. And I really need those leaves to fall, so we're going to just help ourselves a bit by doing that. Okay. Ah, there we go. Oh, yep, we got a bunch more nuggets, more saplings. Yeah, they tend to vary widely, whether or not you get like a million saplings or nothing. <laughs> and so, now that force is actually one of the most useful of the things, because I'm not making dirt all the time anymore, I'm no longer worried about sapling production, I'm worried about making ingots. I, You can see I've converted a lot of my usual production over. And it looks like I've got five of these now, so we're just going to keep going through. Yeah, I've had anywhere from no nuggets at all up to, I think I've gotten five or six out of one of these as my maximum. 
So it varies a lot. Here we go. There we go. Okay. If it'll recognize that I exist. Very good. Okay, so we got seven. We need nine, so we'll wait for these really quick, because what we're going to be doing is making a force pickaxe to pick up that obsidian. And so, yeah, we're going to get 25. We need 27. We're almost there. I don't think I have any more stored in here, but it doesn't hurt to check. Nah, I don't. Okay. So we're just waiting. We could convert some other metal with uh, the force gems into force ingots, but I don't want to do that at this point because at the moment most of our other metals are more valuable. And if we can just grow this one, then great. We'll just grow the silly thing. Oh yeah, by the way, I've been periodically putting this into here and then setting it. I've, right now I've got it off on my high redstone. But if I put it down to low, it'll start working again. I can put it to left click. It'll start trying to break blocks, as you can see. Um, but you usually can't harvest them because it's cobblestone. But if you get even a single cobblestone out of it, you can repair one of these all the way to max. I'm going to put the cobblestone down somewhere, and I'm not sure why. There it is. So, yep, even a single piece of cobblestone will repair this. So you can set 50 to 49. Perfect. So it's continuing to break these, but as you can see, it's not getting anything. But as soon as we put this in, it'll go faster. And so let me start harvesting. But because we want to be able to do this somewhat more automatic, and actually we're probably going to want to convert over to another kind of tool. This is great for our own personal use, but what we'll probably want to end up doing once we've automated this fully is just give it a full set of nine pickaxes in here and let it go to work and let it just harvest that all day long. Because then we'll have tons and tons and tons of cobblestone. Because that vacuum hopper will just suck those right up. Yeah, we're not quite there yet. But we will be. So, for now. Uh, and I'll let you know. Okay. So, now we got our uh, force nuggets here. And we're just going to... make our ingots. And unlike normal pickaxes, if you try to make this with uh, just ordinary sticks, it will not work. So if you did like this, for example, you go, oh, well, it's not working. That's right, it's not, because force ones require all their own oop, products. So you need force sticks in order for you to make your Oh, so lovely force pickaxe. There it is. Excellent. So now we got that. We can come over here and harvest this. It'll still take a while, but it, it's harvestable. Yeah, obsidian. I really wish this stuff wasn't quite as hard to harvest as it is, but we live with the reality that we live in. So look, there it is. Excellent. And as you remember, we already killed that one ender thing. Um, maybe this was a separate one. There was one that was dying from the rain. I can't remember. Um, we got an ender pearl from that, and now we need to make a hopper. And I've already arranged, and I'm not going to try and click with that ender pearl because bad things could happen. <laughs> I've already arranged to... I had one piece of iron here, and I worked with a bunch of other stuff, and I should have... Yep, okay, I got my four iron. And it gets there, and now... What I need to do is make a chest for make my hopper. I probably should make another chest anyway, but for other purposes. But now that I've got a chest and ender pearl, oop, sorry, not, not the chest yet. Hopper first. Ah, this uses a lot of iron for what we're doing right now. Hopper, ender pearl, obsidian, and we now get a vacuum hopper. Now vacuum hoppers are just I don't know how to describe it, but hopper. They are awesome. That's how I describe them. Okay. So, right there, and, uh, but 
If right now, if it's like this, it will suck items in. So I'll show you that. And I, what I really want to do is just make a bunch of normal pickaxes, actually. Actually, I think I'll do that right now. I'll just make a bunch of pickaxes that are normal. If I can. Okay. Uh, we'll make a bunch. Okay, so now I can just give it all of these tools. Tell it to left click with them. And turn it on. So now you can see as it breaks, it is going to be picked up. And it's collecting them. But you notice it's not dropping them off here yet. That's because we haven't configured it. And we do that this over here, with this over here. So you can do it. It can actually pick up experience, and you can put that as an output. And I believe it drops it as um, liquid at EXP from the same mod as uh, that, I believe, open blocks. Uh, or you can set it to output items according to direction. Now, where, whenever you click on it, this front part right here is wherever you're looking at. It's actually amazing like that. So if I actually did it sideways like that, you'll notice when I came in here, it start off sideways. Yeah, whoever designed that was a genius. And so here, since we want it to on the bottom, what we're going to do is drag it upwards and click on that one. With So you drag it with right click and left click determines output. So now when we've got that doing, it's going right there. Exactly where we want it to be. And now I'm actually going to make this a double chest so that we can just kind of keep going and going. But as you can see, this is an extremely useful method. And so I'm actually going to just go ahead and do this. And so, in this episode, we've gotten our autonomous activator autonomous activator in place we've gotten our and we've got that set up with our oh so lovely lava it yeah just round robin okay so it's it, round robin means it's just going through and using each one once it really doesn't matter to us which one they're doing in which order but that works right so now if we leave this here and we come back a while later this will have harvested a whole heck of a lot. Yay for happiness! Now there's some other stuff we're going to be doing with autonomous activators later, because as you can see, there are slots you can do with them. You can do inputs and outputs and everything else, and eventually we're going to do outputs where we're going to have something automatically crafting stone pickaxes, which is I'm going to feed into here, uh, and the or actually even more than just that right now, we're probably going to have uh, stone. Um, if I can think. Uh, stone hammers, yeah. Actually, I'm going to give it a stone hammer so it'll produce some gravel too for us. Because gravel is useful as well. As a matter of fact, right now, at this moment, gravel is probably more useful than the other, and I probably should have just told it all to make gravel, but this works for now. Having cobblestone is useful. All right, so we've made our Thomas activators. We've automated a mining system for generating cobblestone. We've gotten our vacuum hopper, which pulls everything in. Uh, and if the eggs were closer, we might end up getting some of them too, but I think they're just out of range out of here. We may end up doing something similar for our chickens soon, so we can just automate all of our egg production, and then we may feed it into barrels, and then and so on. So. I love automation. I think automation is the way to go. And I'm stuck in here with this chicken because it wants to be here. Oh well. So we've done quite a bit. We've gotten our types of blocks, which are mob and explosion proof. We've talked about some things you can do with force. We've harvested obsidian and all of these things. And so I will see you on the next episode when I'll probably be setting up an autonomous activator system.
to take this cobblestone and gravel and do something else. Be seeing you.